afternoon, Mzansi, and a very warm welcome to you. It is a brand new week here on Afternoon Express, and I've got some of my favorite human beings alongside with me. <laughs> Chef Charles, welcome back to the show. Oh, it's thankfully back in the studio, yeah. back to get on with life and back into 2022. I'm here for it, Chef Dumi. Oh. Welcome back, girl. I see you shining, shining, shining. Love the eyes. Not shining as much as this front page girl over here, and I don't know, South <laughs> Africa, if you saw this, but my girl was on the front page this weekend. <laughs> And how you doing, my girl? Yeah, I'm amazing. Listen, fresh off the rat the race tracks, but listen, we're here to deliver nothing but the best in culinary excellence to yes. Mzanzi, and I'm so here for it. Yeah. Now it's all about a new year and new trends on today's Afternoon Express Masterclass with me, Balisa Tembe. Celebrity chef and regular guest Charles Wall Raven is back in the kitchen to whip up, whip up rather some 2020 food trends, including a berry daiquiri mocktail, a batch of of potato milk, a chicken Vienna toad in the hole, a fresh mango and herb salad with hibiscus dressing, and a mushroom and leek tart. It all sounds so delicious. And if you would like to try any of today's recipes, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, in the past two years, our lives have changed completely due to the worldwide pandemic. But it also created opportunities to recreate with your kitchen and rather reconnect too. But many trends have begun with mastering sourdough, those mini pancake cereals, and almost a shortage of feta to satisfy that viral TikTok pasta recipe. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Well, because food trends are a yearly thing, and this year, Chef Chart is breaking down the top five food trends for 2022. Now, Chef Chart, there's a lot of craziness you've been seeing <laughs> online. Are you about to break it down for us? Oh, absolutely. There is so much going on, but I think it's because our lives have changed so much yeah. with the pandemic and how we adapt. I mean, it's got so many people into the kitchen. I mean, we never, you know, last year, we ne or the year before that, actually, you know, thinking about it, you know, we never heard of a, a sourdough starter yeah. and, and all that sort of nonsense. And now, look, we're now taking things and we're elevating things there. Yeah. But I think we also sort of really going back to basic, we sort of understand of where things are coming from, you know, the, the process of food, We've been growing things in our in our own gardens at, at home. And, you know, we're creative. And even if you're on a, like a little sort of window box, you've got a few herbs or things yeah. like that, yeah. and you'd be amazed at what you can do. And, of course, with all that, and I'm going to kick off with the with the first, which is right in front of me, are your scraps. Yeah. I mean, you know, are you pretty girls pretty good at sort of splitting things up at home? I won't yeah. say good, but I'll say I'm learning. I'm trying to yeah. be as eco-friendly as possible these days. I think that's one of the trends that I'm absolutely loving. Yeah. I'm really, really, really good at separating my trash, but I haven't graduated fully. Nice. The, I'm just as far as my recycled one side and um, then like the things that go rotten and then like but I do kind of put mm. some plastics that can't be recycled no, sure. in there. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we are, I think, as a whole, you know, pretty bad. Cape Town out there, we are actually one of the worst. We actually have the, one of the worst in terms of recycling here. Wow. And unfortunately, it comes down to a bit of a bit of a cost. But anyway, that's another whole sort of topic of conversation. But here, taking your waste, use, utilizing that. Um, you know, and on top of that, one, one thing we've been learning about is we're becoming very vegetable curious, is the sort of the, the word. Um, and this obviously creates another whole, you know, trend, not just sort of recycling and becoming eco-friendly about that, is eating more vegetables. Yeah. You know, I know we love a good steak, we love a bit of chicken or whatever it might be, we <laughs> all do. But I think we are starting to see a, a big trend, you know, vegetables we can really make taste amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you can cook something and then you can start to put another trend which is coming in, you know, sauces, condiments going yes. on. Yes, mm. and Chef Chart, do me. Now listen, <laughs> I've got a little bit of a love-hate relationship with this trend because not Lizzo, one of my favorite musicians, putting mustard on everything. I've yeah. seen her put mm. mustard on watermelon. I've seen her put them in uh, little chocolate biscuits. Galore. I mean, it will <laughs> not stop. So is there a limit to this trend? There is a limit per se, but I think the biggest thing is that people are starting to make their own. You know, there is store bought and so forth, but people are starting to get ah. into the thick of things instead of seeing that, yes, there's stuff that I can buy, but how can I make this myself? So many people have started making mayo, I believe, from scratch. Yeah. I've seen so many trends online where people make their own types of mayos, aiolis, and even sweet chili sauces. So that's basically the direction that a lot of people are go uh, going in. Yeah, and, and I think we're actually 
actually really is coming from a stem from so restaurants for years, and especially when you start looking at a mm. Japanese oriental kitchen, they do combinations of different sauces together. Uh. So, you know, you, I mean, you take it, everyone can be associated here with, with you know, going to a sushi bar. Mm. And, you know, you've got some lovely sauces, you've got lovely teriyaki that goes with it, sometimes it might add something else to it. So there's a combination of sauces that get put together. Gotcha. And I think that's where this is going to start to yeah. play. And people are going to start getting, you know, there. I mean, let's face it, we go in the kitchen, we start, let's make a marinade. We know we put a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this and we go in there. But I think now we're going to try and finesse that and try and be consistent Fine with the tune blend. It. Fine tune it. Not just sort of, you know, throw a bit of whatever you want in it. And actually, Chef Charles, it. this is exactly what we're going to be experimenting with in our own kitchen a little bit later on with that hibiscus dressing. Oh, Ooh. absolutely. We are going to get into, into dressings a bit later on. And then, you know, right on the other side there, just to slip that in there, potato milk, <laughs> you know, is the, the new milk of the, of, the, of the world. What do you think about it? Do you know me? what? The one thing I'm, I am loving with these trends specifically, the one thing that connects them is how we're trying to make our world a better place just with our food. Something as simple as taking our scraps and reusing those, yeah. taking them and, you know, preserving and making stuff like condiments mm. from home, taking stuff like potato and making that a trend where you can make your own milk. Yeah. Oat milk was a trend, almond milk was a trend, and now potatoes have been turned into a milk. I think that on, on its own, I'd like for you Ooh. to taste it and <laughs> mind blowing. It, no, it is mind blowing. I mean, hey, let's don't forget, you know, <laughs> the potato gave us vodka. I'm so yeah. it, it's now giving us non-dairy, <laughs> vegan friendly. And actually, what's really quite interesting, as you've been reading about uh, potato milk, is actually 75% more neutral carbon to the environment than growing like things like oats for oat milk. Wow. So there's a whole yeah. sort of different, you know, mm. so, you know, we're not just thinking of food of like we grow, we put some fertilizers, put some yeah. water. It's the processes beyond that. Okay. You know, when we started talking vegans, you know, like vegans want to say like I eat avocados and almonds, but actually you need bees to pollinate it. Mm. So that is a whole sort of issue. So again, people are really starting to go right, right back to the, the ground Four up, things. which is a which is a great, uh, you know, great trend in, in, in that there. Um, and then our last one, I think, you know, which is also quite interesting and a great one, because we always start with, you know, being dry or sober January and stuff, and we're becoming what we call sort of, uh, sort of sober curious mm. is another big trend this year where we're starting to pair drinks with our food yeah. that are non-alcoholic. So let's ke let's tick these boxes. It seems as if we've made quite a way here. We've ticked off uh, being bio-friendly, you yeah. know, recycling, using our off scraps as compost because the food waste is crazy mm. being dumped in our sites. We've done condiments, we've done milk, uh, potato milk. Potato and then, Dumi, this is something that I've been so obsessed with lately, recycling. Mm. kind of shopping bags, also wooden um, utensils. You've got a new coffee trend your side as Bec well. Yes, Balisa, because the world is taking a bit of a knock in terms of the amount of coffee beans that we We are in a bit of a shortage, but that's uh, and something natural in terms of the, 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 the trees and so forth. But I think because of the, the change in that, people are moving further away from ca caffeine uh, drinks. So that's why people are doing a lot more of those lattes where you've got those yes. turmeric lattes yeah. and stuff like that. My favorite. A lot of our food is getting plant-based from the foods we eat. Like right now, I've got some coconut flour here. I've got some... Uh, Chia seeds. We're trying so much to, you know, to move in that direction where we're trying to make the most of our foods, you know, not just take whatever we have and, and eat, but trying to stretch it as far as we can and being as natural as possible. Okay, I'm so here for it. So if you are not that much of a caffeine lover, it seems as if you just need to hop online and then there's so many alternatives that you can try. And also, Udumi has helped us with some vegan, veg vegetable, vegetarian type options. Mm -hmm. So here for it. But we're keeping the trends going through afternoon express so don't move a muscle we've got our very first recipe coming up a hundred percent but then we could always open another crash a hundred percent a hundred percent fresh a hundred percent goodness Made with love by clover <sighs> Another foodie trend for 2022 is non-alcoholic drinks, and we are here for it. 100% fresh mocktails using fruit and herbs are on the global menu this year. Today, we're serving you a 100% tasty berry daiquiri mocktail made with clover crush. Mm. Do me. Give me some more freshness, honey. I feel like if we were to do a test on how, uh, how amazing and tasty this recipe would be, it would get 100% because of the <laughs> flavors that go into it. It's seasonal, it's perfect in terms of the flavors that go into it. We've got something natural because we are talking about keeping it as natural as possible, but we're also trying to make sure we enjoy those flavors. And I think this is where our Clover Crush comes in. And we're making a alcohol-free daiquiri, which starts with our Clover Crush cranberry juice. We've chosen to go with the cranberry, but you could also still use that berry flavor. I'm gonna start by 
are adding that into our mocktail I mean, jar. Chart, please may you pass this down to Domi, just as she's pouring some um, crush in there. Add a little bit more for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, add a little bit more for me. It is always so amazing to me, the complete rejuvenation that I feel after a little mm -hmm. bit of healthy sugars and, and, you know, some of that fructose, hey? Yeah. Well, ab absolutely. You, you want to keep things, you know, we're at this time of the year, we've probably made some commitments. We're going to, you mm -hmm. know, lose a bit of weight. We're going to train. <laughs> we're going to get out and about and li live a, a healthier lifestyle or, a, you know, as, as a sort of mocktail suggests, you know, a sober, so curious bad. kind of way. I think it's a great one. And you know, especially you've got things that are, are seasonal, like, you know, there's some beautiful berries. I mm -hmm. mean, you can't get any better than sort of, you know, blueberries, blackberries, um, you know, gooseberries. I mean, you can just put, put whatever you want in here, really. That's, mm. that's seasonal and off you go. So I just put some fruit in today and then a little bit of uh, lemon juice, acidity as well. Remember, berries are actually quite sharp. So something like, yeah. a, like a raspberry, you've got a, a wonderful sharpness with it. So you actually want to enhance that a little bit more. So a little bit of lemon juice helps, should you have that. But also have the strawberries, because they also have quite a sort of a sharpness, especially later on the season. I would actually think that you'd run away from something like a lemon mm. to kind of balance that out, but you're actually leaning more towards well, it. Well, again, you know, certain things. So we always think of the, the opposites, like sort of a sweet and vinegar, yeah, salt, sweet and vinegar, listen to me. <laughs> oh my goodness, hey, get going here. Yeah. You know, sort of salt, you know, so that salt and vinegar are sort of opposites. You've got something that's the salty, and then you've got the, mm. the, the, the acidity going there. It's like, but it really well works. Um, and then you've got other things that, you know, you want to put like sugar and sugar together, so you bind things mm, up as, as well. Um, and then, yeah. But I, I don't know if you've noticed if you eat lemons, right? And, and it does that thing that, uh -huh. that happens in your mouth. But have you re realized that afterwards it tastes a little sweeter? Yeah. Okay. It's basically that reaction where within the, the berries, they're tart in themselves, but then the lemon also just enhances that flavor. Mm -hmm. So we've put like three different berries in here. Into that, we've added some honey chef. We've added that lemon juice you were talking about. Yep. And because we're going with the daiquiri root, we're going in with a bit of ice that we're going to crush. Mm -hmm. It's going to be almost like a, uh, a, a smooth. Yeah, like a slushy. That's what we're going, the direction we're going for. Yeah. And again, you, know, if you, have, you, have, you haven't got one of these just, you know, you'll just your standard little liquid liquidizer you can you know put into a little cocktail shaker and mm. just shake it all up so again you don't have to have the tools so get creative you've got to mix it in a bowl mix it in a bowl Go really at the end it. of the day so um yeah i mean like all that goodness into there and uh let's just pick it in and give it a bit of a Sweet. Whoa. Okay, whilst you guys are uh, serving yourselves up some delicious oh, daiquiris, yes. some mocktails, you've already got one here for me. Already the colour is vibrant. It's looking super, super fresh, delicious, ready to enjoy. And another thing I love is that mm. you know we're going with the berry flavour now. Because we've got such seasonal uh, fruits in season right now, oh. you could even do something like a peach that would pair well with the crushed um, orange flavours. So see whatever you've got in season and try and pair it with the, you know, the flavours that work at that time. So we're going with our cranberry, that sweetness from the cranberry, cranberry the tartness from the berries just works so well. Stunning. I'm here for it. Chef Chart. If anyone were to try something different, new, fresh, with something like a daiquiri, the mocktails, and adding in mm. some fresh juice. How would we go? What, what more can we do? How can we play? Well, I mean, now you can start thinking of, like, what about maybe nuts into mm. it? So now you're trying to sort of, you know, be you know, on the healthy streak again like mm. that. Really good way of sort of incorporating in, that into there. Uh, I mean, obviously, this goes on. There's so many different tangents. We go into an actual smoothie thing. Yeah. We've got, you know, uh, yo yogurts coming, coming in. Um, so, yeah, what would you add in? To me, what would you sort of... A frozen lollipop, man. A frozen pop, uh, you know, just put it into those ice mo um, lolly oh. molds. Put it in the freezer. It's a beautiful summer, yeah. you know, refresher. You know, you take the exact same um, recipe, just freeze it, and you've got something refreshing with this heat that oh. we're experiencing. Something um, for the kids. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Very much so. I mean, that's what you gotta, you know, keep everybody happy when it's hot like this. Well, cheers to us. We cheers. still have so cheers, cheers. many more trends coming up. Chim -chim. Now that is 100% tasty to get your hands on this recipe. Simply head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our social media question. Ooh. And it goes a little bit like this. Today is all about the recipes that are taking the internet by storm. Now, how often do you try out the recipes that you see online? Make sure you use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. I already know my <laughs> answer, but South Africa, I'm definitely going to be trying to read out some of your answers later on in the show. <laughs> now, we've chatted through this year's trends, so coming up, it's time to get stuck in as we make a batch of, listen to this, potato milk. Mm. Ooh. <laughs>
You know how that goes on. <laughs> the debate has already started <laughs> here in the kitchen. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, where we are trying some of the most popular trends found online. Now, Chef Chart, you're trying to convince me, but I ain't convinced. <laughs> I ain't convinced. Now, listen to this one, Mzansi. 2022 is bringing so many new trends, and one such a trend is potato milk. It's taken center stage, and today we're going to be showing you how to make your very own batch. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's Listen, I came with my big girl socks on. Mm -hmm. I am going to try a batch, but first, let us talk through how to create this m masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> masterpiece, right? I think, you know, that's one thing I'm, 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 I'm I think I'm leaning towards you as well, Balissa, with the trends. You know, there's some trends where I feel like I'm not too sure about it, but let's give it a try and see how it goes. So it starts off with our potatoes, we're making potato milk. And the one of the most important things to note is when you cook your potatoes, I always start them with cold water and then let them come up to temperature. But one very important thing to add in there is salt. Oh. And I know people are shocked at why we would add salt, but obviously the type of milk we're using here, if we're gonna make it, ideally we would say you perhaps wanna use it in stuff like your coffees, because you know if you add a touch of salt to your coffee, it makes it go a long way and it tastes look like extra good. So it starts off, I'm gonna cut up some potatoes, let them cook down, and then Chef, you're gonna tell us what other ingredients actually go into making this yeah. actual potato. Well, just a quick tip actually, whilst you're talking about, you know, putting into cold water. Mm -hmm. Remember South Africa, anything that grows below the ground, into cold water. Mm -hmm. Halfway up, warm water, anything that grows above the ground that's green, Hot. put into boiling water. Mm. There we go. Anyway. Uh, you see, it's a masterclass. <laughs> I hope you're taking down your notes this 2022. We right. came through with all of the knowledge. I'm oh, here for it. Indeed, right. So, potatoes that have been cooked, but you don't want them to go mush. mush. Yeah. So, they mustn't be overcooked. You literally still, you actually don't want to, the whole uh, objective and trying to understand all of this now, is you don't want to break it down completely. And this is where they're saying, you know, people are like, oh, well, it's carbs and all, and all yeah. the rest of it, actually. So, you're not changing the entire structure of the potato as you would when you're doing mashed potatoes or roast potatoes or anything like that at all. So again, not so it's like really um, sort of cooked down. And then a little bit of honey, honey, honey. So you get a little bit of that into there just to sort of sweeten up the deal. And then almonds to help with the consistency. So, yeah. you know, is this really going down, you know, potato flavor or has it been enhanced by almonds? <laughs> anyway, that's a, another little debate. And try it at um, home and let us know. Exactly, a little bit more water in here. So I'm just halving everything in just to fit into this here. Okay. And then the cooking liquor as well. Okay. from the potatoes. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you just strain it off, allow it to cool, and then you've got your potato liquor, and then you've got your potatoes on the side there. So when you actually take the recipe, just follow the recipe. And then you need to pour a little bit of that into there, just like that. And obviously, should someone not want to use the honey for that additional flavor, you can still keep it as natural without adding the honey. Uh, absolutely. It's just to give you that, you, you know when you've tasted just, almond milk. Yeah, it just needs a little sort of, uh, you know, off there. Or just use normal sugar if you haven't got any honey or some golden syrup. There's lots of alternatives. <laughs> but I say, your uh, face is not in there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and it just comes milk, you know, that's it. <laughs> Okay, now, the both of you have done an incredible job. You've really, really, really done an incredible job of selling. talking <laughs> us through it, selling it, and I'm almost buying what you're selling. My next question is, with normal milk and some of the other alter milk alternatives, we can freeze. Can you freeze um, potato milk? It is advisable not to. It is advisable not to. In fact, with this type of milk, I'd say the, the shelf life is about three days, whereas with the other milks, you can keep it for longer. So mm. maybe a suggestion would be if you are going to try out the potato milk, make sure you're going to be using it in the next three days versus keeping it. Because we also know that with potatoes, after a while, they do turn brown. So you don't want to be stuck with that mixture Ooh. that also doesn't look yeah. too appealing and too inviting. So rather, you make it if you're going to be indulging in it as soon as possible. Oxidization. Oxidization. That's, that's the stop. English so that's term. That's why it will actually <laughs> go, um, you know, it starts to discolor. Mm. And then obviously, you got to be careful because obviously the sugar there it can ferment as well so yeah. okay. you know there but i mean there you go that is that and you can store it in some little bottles or whatever and that's your potato milk for so 2022 chef chart you've mm. already strained it out that yeah. is um just what else could we do with maybe the, some of that pulp left over well i guess you know that pulp at the end of the day make, could make some very famous chips that we all know that we, yeah. we like in a, in a in a tubular consistency but that's what they actually end up doing is that will go and get reused so again starting to think of like a trend of 2022 reusing the waste products yeah. you know yeah. Let's face it, nine times out of ten, we'll chuck that out. So you're onto it already, girl. Now, Chef Chart, you know <laughs> yes. I'm always the taste tester here. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I thought in 2022, new year, yeah. new me, yeah. um, new opportunities. New opportunities, for I think it's you. great. <laughs> um, Chef Chart, do you want to give us a taste of this? A very baby taste. A very a baby, baby taste. taste. And then let us know. Let us know. 
Let's just say, let us know. <laughs> let me tell you, South Africa, the war is on with Tumi <laughs> and Pali for 2022. But anyway. Putting you on the spot. How is oh, that? Delicious. <laughs> It's unusual. Okay. Yeah? It's, it's unusual. So, you know, you've got that potato. So you, you know, it's like a, a sort of a, a, a watered-down version of a, of a porridge, I, I, I guess. Yeah. That's sort of describing the potato flavour. The, 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 the honey helps. Okay. Guys, the honey helps. Makes a big difference. It really balances out because, it, you know, you're starting to get that... You don't get that sort of that flowery kind of sort of consistency coming through. And I think this would work exactly for dishes like, you know, if you're making your cheese sauces and stuff like that. You could definitely use it in dishes like that because it also, with that thickening in it, mm -hmm. it would definitely very okay. work I, very I think well. you're onto something there. The, the, the thickening counterparts mm -hmm. of what this can do, I think, is going to be a, yeah. a great thing. I mean, like a, like a soup, for instance, you know, you, you mm. put potatoes in there because it actually helps as a, a thickener. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's where this is going to really end up trying to, to go of adding this into, you know, like a condiment of sorts, you know, that you know, a sauce or something. I think that structure is going to really work where you're starting to look after the environment and uh, doing something weird and wonderful. But hey-ho, that's what's yeah, about. Yeah, well, if you are looking for a uh, lactose intolerance packed with nutrients <laughs> alternative, <laughs> we gotcha. I mean, <laughs> they did say potato, potato, but if you would like to get your hands on this recipe, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get the full ingredients list so you can make your own batch at home. I love it. What a team sport. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef Charles. What a team player. Now, a crisp, buttery Yorkshire pudding embodied with a crisp skinned sausages. Toad in a hole is a British classic and a Mzansi favorite. This is going to be a recipe we're going to be trying when we return. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, the famous chef Oscoffier once said that food, good food, is the foundation of genius and genuine happiness. Now, there's nothing better than a glorious good meal to have at the end of a day. And Chef Dumi and Charles are going to show us how to make a South African favorite in many homes, which is sure to put a smile on our own faces. Now, what's on the menu, guys? We're making toad in a hole, and I have to say that this is one dish that I didn't know about until very late in my life. And it it's such a simple recipe, it's such an easy recipe, but I think it merges the British uh, um, uh, culture with 
with our South African culture. You know, it's Tandela Amaviana. Uh -huh. And we're choosing, instead of the sausage that would have a, a, um, a harder casing, we're choosing to go with our Simply Chicken uh, Viannas today. And these are the smoked chicken Viannas. The reason for that is that I love that you can prepare them either in an air fryer or just on the stovetop. And I love the fact that we're using a product that is no MSG, has no pork, no MSG, and it's real chicken breast yeah. in there. So what you make sure to do is just make, cook it according to your um, um, package instructions. And then all you're going to do is top it onto this batter that you're about to make for a chef. It's such a, and I think it, it takes on that Yorkshire pudding uh, direction, right? Well, absolutely. It's the same ingredients as a, a Yorkshire pudding, pancake. Um, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a batter. So yeah. what goes in our batter? A bit of flour, milk, eggs, salt, pepper, and a bit of melted butter. And that is, and that's, and that's it. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So let's just get mixing it. Yeah, Chef, as you do throw in those ingredients, why is this recipe such a great one for busy moms? Oh, because one of these things, you know, you can make in advance. So in the morning you wake up, you're getting the, you know, say for instance, you're getting all the kids all, you know, up and ready and about and what have you, and make up this batter. Yeah. Pop it in the fridge. Actually, the, the, the earlier you make a pancake batter or any of those kind of batters to do things, the better it is. Mm. It really is. You need the flour to stop ab absorbing the actual liquid content, and that liquid basically, in essence, indirectly, chemically, coats the flour. Gotcha. So you have a much thicker consistency um, that really does work really, really well. So make it in advance, let's sit in the fridge. Your, you know, your sausages, your Viennas, you know, you can just pull out the fridge, mm. pop it into your dish, pour this on, and, and, and off you go. So, I mean, it's very, very simple. And literally, just pour your ingredients together and start incorporating them and making this batter. So, you'll see the consistency is a little bit different mm. um, to your, your, your batter that you do for a pancake. You know, more similar sort of consistency of a, of a crumpet, depending on your style, drops gone, whatever you want to term it as. Yeah. So, it's all the same sort of basis points, really, at the, at the, at the end of the day. Got and you. Just gonna bring it together. It's that simple. And what other, I mean, today's show is literally all about the 2022 food trends, the things that we've seen in the past, and also what we're super excited about now, currently. Are there any food trends that have gotten some of your attention, Dumi and Chart? Well, for me, I'm loving that people are getting onto that mushroom train now, you know? It's so that would be something that would definitely work in here, where you put your to your your sauce, your um, simply chicken viandas in there, and then add a bit of mushroom to that because people are getting onto that train where they're starting to realize the flavors, the umami that comes with mushrooms. So that with our uh, simply chicken viandas would work so great together. Ah. And I think one thing I need to touch on as well, this uh, batter that Chef has made, I want you to explain to us why, just like a Yorkshire pudding, it has to go into a hot casserole or a hot dish so that people can ex understand the reasoning for it. Okay. Hot dish, just imagine hot dish. Yeah, if I'm gonna place you, I'm gonna seat you in there, what's gonna happen? <laughs> yeah, boom, yes, up you get. And that's exactly what you want the yeah. Yorkshire pudding, you want the, this batter to, to, to actually do, is you want it to get in there and go, oh, this is hot, guys, I'm gonna jump out. <laughs> and then it has this wonderful lightness and all these little knobbly bits in it, sort of, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta think of this like light, fluffy cloud, pancakey, crumpety, yeah. muffiny kind of thing all together, <laughs> nestled with these lovely little sausages in. And that is what makes it so good. So really important, get that lovely, lovely and hot. Your fat is hot there, so as it hits it there, psh, we're gonna get that instant cooking. You don't want this sort of be a, yeah. like a flat sort of, you know, um, you know, this will end up being like a quiche if you're not, you know, yeah. uh, very, very careful, careful, but you want that high. And as you can see here, you, you can see that the, the sausages are, are hiding um, yeah. in, the, uh, in, the, in the batter, which is uh, really important. Is that um, how I suppose the toad is in the hole? <laughs> Well, you, got it. you know, there's a whole, there's lots of different stories with that. I'm not going to open that can of worms, but, you know, so that's where you've got mm. that little bit of nesting. But again, you know, as, as Tim was saying, you know, if you are vegetarian or you want to eat more, you know, you, you're vegetable curious, then mm. pop in your, your, your mushrooms there. Just cook the mushrooms. Don't have too much liquid because too much liquid will start to spoil the, the, the batter. Mm. But you can do a whole different version of this and it's just great. It's, it's something hearty and vibey and a beautiful gravy with that. Mm. Oh. Oof. I love Done. it. And you know, Dumi, as soon as I took a bite out of that, that um, the, the pastry that Chef made was nice, mm. crunchy, but also soft on the inside. The sausages and the viandas were cooked to perfection. So how long does it need to go in there for what temperature to make sure it becomes that perfect? Okay, we want it to cook for at least 20 to 30 minutes because you want to make sure that the egg is cooked fully. But we cook it at about 200 degrees just to make sure because mm. we want that heat. You want the yeah. oven to be nice and hot so that the eggs actually, because the eggs are the only leavening agent in there. So you want to make sure that they cook through and they get all bulky yeah. and you know. Golden brown? Golden brown. Out it comes and serve it straight away, guys. 
Don't wait, get it out, serve, and Enjoy. happy eating. Toad in the hole. And if you want to get those <laughs> on your tables, quick and easy food, food meals are a must this year, especially with the hustle and the bustle of the new year coming to a close. So let's keep meal time simple with Simply Chicken. Get your hands on this delicious recipe. Visit afternoonexpress.co.za. For more quick and easy recipes, follow at Simply Chicken ZA on Instagram. In the theme of a day, I am going to be giving you guys another trend. We all know that deconstructed food is taking the internet by storm. So we thought that we'd play a game with Chef Chart and Dumi <laughs> and test their food knowledge. <laughs> How the game works, a graphic will appear on the screen with three ingredients. And you will need to guess what the correct dish is. Mm. It's as simple as Ooh. that. You guys get it? Uh, I get it. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm just... all sorts. Yeah, I can be very Got competitive it. just now. <laughs> Well, if you don't get it, forget about it. Forget about it. Exactly. I think that our contenders are ready for action. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to see your first graphic? Again, three ingredients will pop up. You just simply need to guess what the name food first? is. Yeah, say your name, say your name, say your name, say your name, <laughs> say your name. Okay, you are you guys ready? Here. It'll be nice to see it to start off. <laughs> I'm ready. Three, two, one, can we have our first image? Oh, like a subway almost. Um... Can I try, to me? E this yes, to me. This sounds like a cream cheese. Um, uh, ch it's like a little. No, little man. Uh, cheesecake. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> do me, do me, do me. That's what I'm talking about. Well, <laughs> <tell you> that. <laughs> there is the answer. Cheesecake. Awesome. Now it's just that simple. Oh, whatever gotcha. comes to mind, whatever um, meals that kind of get inspired by those ingredients, yeah. just say your name and hope for the best. Okay? Uh -huh. Gotcha. Let us have image number two. Rice, fish, and veggies. Yep. Veggies, sort of deconstructed. Yep. Rice, fish, and veggies there. <gasps> What's this? Uh, no. Say your name. Okay. Say your name. Say your name. I, get, I can't think of any. No. Rice, fish, and veggies. I'm going to try. Do me. Yes, I'm, do I'm me. probably going to be wrong, but I'm thinking of a spring roll. Let's see. No, no, wait. Uh, I know that. I know for a fact that. Uh, what could this what be? Maybe sushi. What's your name? There? What's Sorry. your name? Sorry, <gasps> chart. Yes. yes. What? Sushi is like a. Uh, it's just sushi. Let's see if he's correct. Uh, yeah. You are yes! right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's square. Everyone has a point on the board. No need to oh. fret. We still have more clues coming up. Let us have clue number three. Is this too much? I do <laughs> cheese dough and tomato paste. Pizza. Do me. Ah uh ah. -uh. Say your name. Say your say name. name. Say your name. Say your name. I said charge. You just, just, you just said say my she name. Say my name. She said do me. She said do me. Yes, do me. No, no, yes, we can say it together. Pizza. 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 Let us see if the answer is pizza. Yulili, <laughs> yulili, <laughs> Say your name, say your name. <laughs> the rules are that the simple. Rules are that simple. Okay, <laughs> let's keep a good thing going. Good to our Indom Nandi. We don't stop it. Let us have clue number four. Chart. Yes, chart. Greek salad? Uh, let's see if the answer is a Greek salad. <laughs> okay. Yay! Our chefs are just far too good. You guys are far too mm. confident for my liking. <laughs> this should have been so much harder. It's, it, yeah, mm, yeah, well. But again, so going on, talking of trends and stuff, actually, we are, one of the things, are we are simplifying things. We're yeah. simplifying our lives. We're simplifying the way we eat. We're already starting to take core of, you know, you, you talk about a Greek salad, just, you know, cucumber, but a really good cucumber. Tomatoes. I mean, you want to see the tomatoes you can get access to now. Yeah. I mean, they're incredible. In fact, even I've spoken to, they grow bits of tomatoes, and I'm fortunate to have a little tomato patch. And wow. the tomatoes this year are mm. just incredible. Yeah. They really are. But, you know, we got some really, you know, we're talking about beef tomatoes. We're talking mm. about ox heart tomatoes, mm. blood tomatoes. And so, you know, just the ingredient. Let the ingredient sink. And I think that's what we've got to really sort of focus on, on more. Gotcha. And so where your product is actually coming from, those micro artisanal sort of crafters, mm, you know, that make yeah. cheeses, that make biscuits, that make cakes and things. Those are the kind of people that are really going to be big heroes this year, yeah. in our, in our, and especially like a, a food trend. And, you know, Chef Chart, before we get on to our last one, I would want our adjudicates at the top just to tally up the votes a little <laughs> bit, because this last one... Oh, it's equal at the moment. It's 2-2. Two, two. Okay, but, but, but on that note, Chef Chart, at the end of the day, <laughs> we can 
follow back onto those trends. Mm. You know, like how you were talking about having many herb gardens within your kitchen, yeah. for example. Absolutely. How about growing your own uh, Greek salad in your own exactly. garden? Exactly. In your own home? Absolutely. That's what one needs to get into and start playing. What works for you? I, I know root vegetables doesn't work for me at the moment, but yeah. that's your soil type. But you know, you're starting to understand things, and that's yeah. the whole point of where we're going, I think, certainly globally, is starting to actually know where does our food actually come, come from. from. Always Got even you. taste better when you're grown in your own in your own garden. I love it. But okay, back to you. on that halfway point, <laughs> we just get a little bit of a debrief team moment. We still have two points each, but we're still halfway through the game. Let's have clue number Talk five. I got it, guys. Make it difficult. Let, let us let us believe that you're thinking. Okay, who said it first upstairs? Say it together. How about that? You said it first. I know. I'll we'll say it. We'll say it. We'll say it. I'll still win. You said it first. There. In three, <laughs> two, one. Hummus. It is hummus. It's <laughs> easy. You're supposed well, to say it at the same time. Say... You and Tisha. Oh, 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 I missed that. I missed that memo completely. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Chef Chart is just taking the lead just like that. Let us have the sixth clue up. Chart. Yes, Chart. Bread? No. Flour. I keep thinking water. it's definitely not bread, but. Dumi? Yes, Dumi. Could it be churros? No, uh, no, not churros. But keep thinking, I'm thinking a carb. Chart? Yes, chart. Are we thinking like, like, a, like a batter, like we were talking about our toad in the hole? Flour, egg, water. Yeah, okay, so so it could become a batter, Ooh. but at the end it becomes something else. Are yes, we, uh, chart. Egg in the, so, it won't be a so you said bread bun. and that was a no. Was flour, a, egg and water. Like a, like a flour, but what kind of flour? We get technical here. Uh, he, mm, maybe I we might up. have to take it somewhere else for you to kind of understand. Okay, it is pasta. <laughs> oh, pasta. Okay. I mean, you two. Let us have the seventh one. Come on, guys. Let's pick this one quick. Let's pick okay, this one quick. Okay, I'm disappointed. Okay. Yeah. Why water? Water with our, with our pasta. Do me. No, 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 I don't no, make no, the no. rules. Do me. Oh. Yes, do me. S'mores. Uh. Let's see if it's s'mores. Yes! Okay, so right now it's 3-3 three, three <laughs> each. Let's have the eighth clue up. Chart. <laughs> yes, chart. Ta-ta. Is it tata? Oh, even you could No, vinegar and not. coriander. Ooh, chart. What chart? Biltong. Is it? Yes! A South African <laughs> favorite. <laughs> you, you know, it's a crazy kind of quick fact. There's someone exporting masses of quantities of biltong into the global stratosphere because so much better than the equivalent out, outside of South Africa or outside of Africa is called jerky, which I actually tastes jerky, terrible. Yeah. So, South Africa, be proud. Ooh. We have built on like singing huge praises globally. <laughs> and on that incredible note, continue playing with us on social media. <laughs> Let us know if you were able to get those points in. But we still have one or two more trends coming up, so don't move a muscle. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express and we're keeping it super trendy in the kitchen. Yes, we are. We are doing something that is quite delicious and exciting and it's got a very nice trendy ingredient in it. Okay, well here, let's usher in the condiments of our trends. According to the 2022 Food Trend Squad, you will find a lot of food and drinks made from the humble hibiscus flower. Sounds a bit wacky to you? Well, nope, <laughs> I've tasted it and it is absolutely delicious. So today we're going to show you how to make a seasonal mango, herb and clover feta salad with a flowery hibiscus mm. dressing. It is as delicious as it sounds. It is as delicious as it sounds and I love because of, we, we're touching on hibiscus which for me tends to be a little on the sweeter side and most people don't know that you can use it hibiscus not just in food but even for your face or for the ladies that are trying to look younger for longer definitely use that hibiscus but the, what we're going to be doing is chef is going to make a syrup for us and one thing I love about it is the fact that the flavors of the sweet hibiscus go so great because we're going to be adding our clover feta into mm. the salad as well so you know which the clover feta is nice and salty right yeah and I love the fact that it gives us that elite flavor you've got elite flavor you've got elite taste You've got elite texture, you've got elite quality in this salad that we're going to be making. So I'm going to be putting all this freshness into this and then dressing it with this amazing, tasty, delectable hibiscus syrup you're about to make. Oh, sure. absolutely. I mean, these are beautiful hibiscus uh, flowers. Um, I always grew up as a kid as this. This is, this is a lady in the garden. <laughs> always been told. This is her, her dress and this is her, her crown. Yes, so, yeah. I'm also born, of... born and bred in Durban. These are yeah. everywhere. Absolutely, they are everywhere. So anyway, so you've got these beautiful hibiscuses that you can get and they come in all sorts of different colours. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pop those into some water that I've got on the on the go here as Did well. Did you wash them first? Um, yes, just yeah. in a bit of water here, all rinsed and all the rest of it. Um, and then with some sugar as well, because that's going to give us a wonderful sort of syrup. And just sort of mulch those all sort of down and get that all sort of dissolved and allow those um, sort of colours to permeate into the actual liquid itself. And then ginger. Mm. Yeah. Now, actually, we've got grated ginger here. Now, if you really want to maximise flavour out of ginger, grate it with a microplane and then take it and then actually squeeze it. OK. To get that. those juices out. And again, if you're cooking a dish and you're wanting some last little sort of bit of ginger flavour, add that. Take it off the heat and done. Mm. So like to a curry or to a casserole or something that you're making that calls for a little bit of ginger, that. And then get rid of that because you don't want to eat that. Yeah. You know, that's all the sort of the, the roughage and all the rest of it. Mm. This obviously is going to have to strain with the flowers and things like that. So I'm just going to sort of put that in and, and sort of maximize it. Now. But a nice little tip for but as you do say, other if things. If you don't from, have from there. A, a micro blader, you can just use a grater or whatever. Ab absolutely. Very much so on that there. And for the ladies, like I'm talking about the skin, another trend, instead of throwing it away, like we said, Chef, what you could do is use that for the face mask and also use your hibiscus for that. And that would work on your face. So as soon as you've strained through yeah. that incredible sauce that and, 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 and that syrup that Chef is making, I mean, at the end of the day, it's going to come looking like this. Mm -hmm. yep. But you can then take that pulp and create a beautiful face mask. A beautiful face mask. I mean, self-care <laughs> is the biggest trend in my life right now. So making sure that that self-care is on deck and, and everything is taken mm -hmm. care of. Now, Dumi, on your side, you're starting to add those fresh ingredients Correct. that you spoke about. Yeah, like I'm loving the rainbow colours that we've got here. We've got the green from our baby spinach. We've got the yellow from the mango because the star today is our mango, the sweetness of these ingredients with our feta. I've also added some of our cucumber for the tasty crunch in there. Mm. I'm also adding some of our red peppers. If you want to use uh, a robot, like we call it, <laughs> the red, yellow and green peppers, you could also do that. And we could, you're also adding a bit of pomegranate in there just for that pop of sweet now, hotness as well. That pomegranate, I can just imagine it tasting delicious when it comes to this hibiscus mm -hmm. dressing. I put a very generous <laughs> quantity <laughs> and, do and dose on my salad because I really want to taste some of those floral, feminine yeah. kind of flavours. I can just imagine Imagine this at a girl's brunch. And one thing you'll taste as well is when you taste those floral flavors of the of the hibiscus with a pinch or a taste of that feta, you'll be able mm. to see that balance because the mangoes are also sweet and slightly tart. Wow. And then the pomegranate as well, Balisa, it should be an orchestra in your mouth. This is definitely my new favorite salad and my new favorite dressing. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing, you could use that dressing for any type of dish wow. because it's got the tartness, we've added a bit of vinegar in there as well. And then to finish it all off, just a nice cracking of salt and pepper on the very top when you add it to the table. Mm. Voila. Stunning. And due to Clover's five-step quality process, we are sure that any of the Clover cheeses that you might add here will just work. Exactly. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I'm having a party. It is a party in my mouth. I'm definitely taking a scuffed in of this at home. And if you want to try this out in your scuffed in, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za.
Clover cheese is for those who love life, where everything falls into place and melts away our cares, adding joy and stretching our imagination. Elite quality, elite taste, elite texture. Made with love by Clover. Listen, Mzanti, I'm already telling everyone in the kitchen, make sure you've got my scuff in, pack this in for me, <laughs> because I am truly blown away by all of the trends that we've tried on today's show. But this is definitely one that I'm going to be trying at home. Now we're tapping into the ever-growing popularity of mushrooms when we come back, as we whip up a hearty mushroom and leek tart. Mm. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. This is a beautiful community. It's a small community and we are situated in an area where there's no other pharmacy. So we came in as a service that people needed. So when we got here, everybody was so happy to have us here. So it's such a pleasure for me to be able to serve and it's such a pleasure for my team as well to be able to serve this community. Firstly, we are the first line. And before the farmers and then the patients go to the doctor, they come to us. So we had to step up and see what assistance we can give to the community. And the doctors themselves had the limited number of patients that they were seeing a day. But when customers don't feel well, they come to us. And then we had to be the ones to step up and say, this is what you can do, and this is an advice our patients on what to do. And then when to go see the doctor, when to go to the hospital. But at least that gave some kind of hope and it gives them some kind of assurance whenever they got their advices from us. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave.
Plus trend of the day. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, Chef Chart, you're saying ex nate to the meat eaters and hell yes to some of those veggies. Absolutely. I mean, let's make, you know, vegetables a hero. You have these beautiful heirloom sort of products. Oh. That's what we actually want at the end of the day. Well, let's please more of our viewers like our floor manager, Chadwin. He's like, give us more. <laughs> now, let me show you how. More people are looking for healthier meat replacements that taste delicious. Have you considered mushrooms? The hearty texture of mushrooms imitates that meatiness we sometimes crave so much. Mm. And I can assure you that you will not crave any meat when you taste this mushroom and leek tart made with the Clover Authenticast Greek-style yogurt. Oh, this already sounds so good to me. It is the only Greek style yogurt, Greek style yogurt in South Africa, and that on its own is authentic enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make sure we get it correct. Well, yeah, chef. <laughs> you've got to get a combination right. So let yeah. me actually, I'm going to take a take sure. a lead here and quickly get our, our mushrooms. Now, mushrooms bring out a six flavor profile that we describe as umami, yeah. which means savoriness. Yeah. So, you know, it describes sort of meatiness. So when you're having like a, a lasagna, for instance, you've got that wonderful umami kind of flavor. So that's what mushrooms really go to. So in a bit of butter into there and a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. Remember, mushrooms are like a sponge. Yeah. So they absorb yeah. all that liquid. So don't be liberal and go olive oil, you know, deluxe kind of thing because they're just going to sort of absorb it all up there. But pop That's that into what there. I've been doing. And then sometimes oh. your mushrooms end up looking limp and a little and sad. And, and same as aubergine. You know, oh, yeah. don't dress it in that there. The, 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 the least amount, the actual better. So to that there, we're just going to add in the rest of it. I'm gonna, I'll rely on this to normally sort of cook down a little bit, but I'm just going to get going. Let's put in our, some spinach. Um, let's put in our scallions, spring onions, whatever you want to term them as. And let's just pop that to one side out the way. Okay. Um, and then I suppose it's on to getting our, our, our filo. Yeah, filo, because a filo. tart is not a tart without that pastry, without that crust, without that something, that added layer of texture. Mm. Absolutely. But very important just to have a damp tea towel just to cover it when you're taking layer by layer. So what I'm going to do is on this side here is I've got a little bit of greaseproof paper just to help slide it into my baking dish just now. And I'm just going to take a sheet of this here and let's just sort of open that up and pop that onto there and then cover really important guys cover it at all the time because you don't want that to to dry out and then with your brush and um, all you're going to do is just sort of brush it with melted butter and brush to your heart's content at the end <laughs> of the day really okay. um, and then whilst I'm going to do this I'm going to put this another sheet on top more butter and keep layering it what are you doing to me? Uh, that dish is not complete. I mean, yes, it would be a great uh, um, tart on its own, but also you need something to bind it all together. And this is where our Clover Authenticos comes in. I've got some eggs that I've had in here that have already been uh, beaten up. Uh, all I'm going to do is an add some of that Clover Authenticos into this. And what this does is that the tartness for uh, the tanginess of it will basically balance well with the flavors that we've got in there. Chef mentioned the umami from the mushrooms. That with the eggs and the cheese all together just gives you an, a delectable bite and knowing what you don't have to stress about I don't have meat in my dish I'm gonna you're not gonna miss it at all it is yeah. gonna give you so much flavor on its own and then into this because we also want it to melt away and be nice and golden brown when we pop it in the oven I'm adding a bit of cheddar cheese but we also have a bit more feta there and this in essence will be the binding agent and also the stability to your your, your tart you know when you cut into it and you want to yeah. see those definite layers and see what ingredients are in there that's where this mixture comes in and that's why I love the fact that we've chosen to go with the authenticos but if you're choosing to do something of a sweeter tart, you could still do that and maybe use the other flavor that uh, Clover Authenticos has. We've got the co coconut and the apple and cinnamon. So yes. it's literally just about choosing the ingredients you want to use and letting them just work uh, together. So whether you're doing a savory tart or, or a sweet. sweet tart, there's basically something Options. for you there. Here for it, Chef Chart, another thing mm. that I'm picking up here, when you are coating your phyllo pastry yes. with that butter, is you offsetting the sheets. You're oh, not lining look at them you, up. Girl, huh? Yeah, you're not <laughs> lining them up Serious either. attention on on that there. So with that, I've just done offset because I'm going to make it sort of all look beautiful and, and, and pretty. So what we're going to do is, to make life easier, is we've got our, again, just slightly greased, uh, you know, um, uh, flanton. And what you want to do is pick it up down to the sheet of your um, grease proof and then just slide it underneath here just like that. Ah. Yep. So that's on top there. And then what you need to do then is go and actually just sort of lift the side and chase it into the corner. Because you want a nice vertical kind of side. Mm. So bring it up at this stage of the game and just keep working that like that. So you've got this lovely sort of casing 
just like that. I mean, how gorgeous does that I look? I mean, or you can and make then... it as cute as mine. You made me a little mini <laughs> well, one. Well, a little mini one as well, yeah. absolutely. So if you haven't got a big sort of dish like this, imagine like little muffin tins you could also do as well. So Lovely. you've got that into there. And into here, we've got to put our, some garlic and then a little bit of zest as well. So again, this is going to give a wonderful sort of freshness to it mm. as we go. So a little bit into there. And you've got that mixture there. To me, right? Yeah. OK. Yeah. So ideally, you want to actually allow this to cool ever so slightly. So anyway, <laughs> pretend this is nice and cooled. OK. And we're going to put into here. Wow. And let's just sort of pour that into there. And then Last to there. Yeast. And then take this lovely the bit mixture. on that there. Mm. Your mixture you're going to pour in just like that Well, Chef Charts will well. be putting on those finishing touches. If you want these recipes, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Before we leave, how long? So get into the oven, once I've just going to fold it over here, at about 180 degrees for about 25 minutes thereabouts. Perfect. It's lovely and golden. So just sort of scrunch that over, make it look beautiful, and then into the oven it goes and it bakes. Et voilà. There is a classic mayonnaise that brings out the traditional French in three levels of tanginess. The mild classic, the medium classic, the strong classic. Tangy, the way you love it. Made with love by Clover. Now we've reached my favorite part of the show where we get to eat the incredible goodies that we've created on today's show. It was all about the tips, tricks, and trends that have been trending online. Now it's been such an incredible day with you guys. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for the tips, thank you for the advice, and thank you for the knowledge. Absolute pleasure. Well, let's get 2022 under <laughs> underway and make it all happen and have some great food and, you know, great that. friendships as well, you know. Well, let's eat. But we will be back on Thursday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. with more inspiring and trendy food meal ideas. We'll also be entertained by the reggae band, the River Dons, in studio. But until then, I'm Zansi City. Good night, stay safe and happy eating. <laughs> Life's what you make it, however you choose to shake, bake and celebrate it. Here's to a great 2022, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.